Um, our first item is a special report, and it's the uh, proclamation for uh, Dogwood Day, which will be read by our city recorder, uh, Scott Stauffer, Milwaukee Historical Society's Greg Hemer, and the Daughters of the American Revolution, Phyllis Hines. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And uh, if I may be a couple of days early, happy Dogwood to every Dogwood Day to everybody. Uh, as a refresher to the public who may be watching, May 21st is celebrated annually by Milwaukee as Dogwood Day. It's the date of incorporation. And the dogwood has been a symbol of the community uh, officially since adopted by council in 1962. And uh, at least since the 50s when dogwoods were uh, permanently planted across the city with the world's most famous dogwood, uh, formerly being near the corner of 32nd and Harrison. We have a brief presentation for you. Uh, Mr. Hemer is prepared, Mr. Hemer with the Historical Society and Phyllis from the Daughters of the American Revolution have joined us. Um, they've been good partners with us the last few years as we work on Dogwood Day related activities. Um, I'm going to attempt to launch the slide now, Greg. So if this crashes again, uh, bear with us, uh, bear with us and I'll be back and we will just have to verbalize it. But here we go, Greg. Can you hear me? And do you see the screen? Yes. Very good. Okay. Yay. Good job. Uh, there's announcements. And uh, here we go. I'll turn it over to Mr. Hemer. All right. So my name is Greg Hemer with Milwaukee Historical Society. And tonight I am presenting Ode to the Dogwood Tree. Slide. A seed began to sprout in 1847 replacing a tree that reached to the heavens. It started with a few leaves and branches and grew with nutrients from water and the trenches. Our roots began to grow. Slide, Scott. Our dogwood tree grew and grew, gaining strength through and through. It added more leaves and some more branches. It survived winters and natural disasters. Our roots grew bigger and bigger. Slide. The trunk started to appear in 1903. It was needed to strengthen our tree. The trunk said to all the leaves, we will help protect you for your ease. Our roots grew bigger and bigger. Slide. Our dogwood tree grew faster and faster, add adding many more leaves and many more branches. As a tree was growing at the top, the trunk promised to take care of the rest of the flock. Our roots got bigger and thicker. Slide. Our dogwood tree was thriving, growing more and more and really surviving. The branches and leaves were all about and the trunk of the tree was really showing off. Our roots are now long and strong. Slide. Then came word from the east there is a storm coming to ravish and feast. The trunk said to all of its masses, hold on tight, we'll lose some leaves and branches. Our roots steadied the tree. Slide. Our poor dogwood tree almost looks dead, but the trunk is trying hard to keep the branches and leaves fed. When the storm passes, the trunk did say, all you branches and leaves can come out and play. Our roots held up our tree. Slide. When the storm is done and its rampage, the trunk, branches, and leaves will all assess the damage. We know the dogwood will once again be mighty and strong because our roots, our shared history, is not done. Our roots are stronger than ever. Slide. Our dogwood tree is not a riddle. It is our city, our heritage, and our perfect symbol. Now, Mr. Mayor, when Scott says, please read the proclamation of our beloved dogwood tree. Our roots will always feed the tree. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hamer. And actually, I'm going to uh, ask uh, Ms. Hines to share a few remarks before we move on to. Uh, my name is Phyllis Hines, and I'm the region elect of the Susanna Lee Barlow chapter of DAR. 
The mission of the Daughters of the American Revolution is to promote historic preservation, education, and patriotism, and May is Historic Preservation Month. In an Oregonian article from Sunday, October 8th, 1920, is this statement. Chairman of the Committee on Preservation of Historic Spots stated that it is the desire of the National Society that every chapter collect data relevant to its vicinity, and if not otherwise marked, to memorialize them by sending perfected records, which, unquote, which intent was creating and dedicating historical markers. The first marker dedicated by the Susanna Lee Barlow chapter was the Johnson Creek marker in Milwaukee, Oregon in 1922, which was named for Reverend William Johnson. Spread throughout Clackamas County are a significant number of historical markers from varied chapters. On April 27th, 1952, the Susanna Lee Barlow chapter presented and dedicated the marker named Dogwood Tree at Niedermeyer Home. Our chapter is proud to be in partnership with the city of Milwaukee on the celebration of Dogwood Days. During the time of COVID-19, our chapter has taken on a different mission by making and donating over 600 masks, face masks to date. So we're busy, Greg. <laughs> thank you, Mayor. And, and uh, thank you. Thank, thank you, Phyllis. Phyllis. And, and Mr. Mayor, we have one, one more uh, Dogwood, Dogwood Day, Day announcement to make. Uh, As uh, uh, our followers, followers know on social media, we have been running a Instagram photo contest for hashtag Milwaukee Dogwood. And um, we have selected this year's winners. And I think the next slide is those winners. So. Uh, I'm very pleased to present the photos. Um, as you can see there, they are presented, the one on the left, and these are the publicly viewable um, Instagram handles. We are in contact with both of these individuals, and I don't know, I, I can't see, let me see if they're in the, I can't tell, Brandy Rudder maybe uh, is raising her hand. Let me see. Brandy, um, how to talk. I'm going to. I think this might be one of our dog winners. I'm going to allow Brandy to talk. Brandy, can you hear us? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. And are you one of our Dogwood Day photo contest? Yeah. My husband took the picture on the right of the dogwood tree in our backyard, and he wasn't able to join. But I am so excited to tell you that he is like over the moon <laughs> about winning, <laughs> and we really love our dogwood tree. And we're super proud to be um, part of this community. So thank you. Well, that's excellent. We appreciate you and your husband uh, contributing that. The other one was by um, hand, uh, Instagram handle Lubu for you and Benji too, and staff is in contact with them uh, with them as well. And we will be sending um, uh, to um, Brandy's husband and the other winner uh, these one one of you'll be getting one of these. Uh, your husband, your husband will be getting one of these, Brandy. These uh, uh, award plaques, these metal photo images of dogwood. Uh, so we'll be looking for that in the mail. And uh, thank you for participating. And uh, with that, Mr. Mayor, um, that is uh, our introductory remarks. If you'd like to read the proclamation. All right. Whereas the beauty of the Pacific uh, native Pacific dogwood, Cornus nutali was nurtured and cultivated by the earliest settlers in the Milwaukee area. And whereas this community was incorporated on May 21st, 1903 by the authority of the Oregon State Legislature and Governor George E. Chamberlain. And whereas on July 9th, 1962, the city council designated the dogwood as the city's official flower and the dogwood city of the West as the city's nickname. And whereas by designating May 21st as dogwood day in the city is making uh, the city is making note of our shared heritage with the earth and each other. Now, therefore, I, Mark Gamba, Mayor of the City of Milwaukee, a Municipal Corporation in the County of Clackamas and the State of Oregon, do hereby proclaim May 21st, 2020 to be Dogwood Day in Milwaukee, the Dogwood City of the West. Can I just say to Brandy and, and her husband, that's a beautiful tree. I see, you know, most of the dogwoods around are white or pale pink but that's a really vivid pink and that's a really beautiful that's gorgeous yeah thank you, thank you mr mayor and uh greg i know you're part of the next uh presentation item thank you for joining us phyllis uh as you're familiar in in-person meetings you're welcome to stay for the meeting but uh if you log off we'll take no offense i just have to figure out how <laughs> <laughs> Nor 
right hand corner. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> yes, and thank you, Brandy, for joining us. And tell your husband, uh, thank, uh, thank you for taking the photo. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you. Now, um, Mr. Mayor, I'm going to scroll to the next item. And I don't know if Councilor Beatty and Mr. Hemer have worked out a who's talking first scenario, but um, next item. Yeah, we have the Historic Preservation Month, which will be presented by uh, Councilor Beatty and Milwaukee Historical Society, Greg Hemer. Um, I don't really have anything to present. Uh, I helped to work on the language of the uh, of the proclamation, but I'm going to defer to Greg as to whatever kind. Of, uh, well, I guess I would say, um, you know, May as Historic Preservation Month comes uh, for it's a nationwide thing, uh, sort of started by the National Trust for Historic Preservation, like 50 or 60 years ago. Um, in Oregon, we have a group called Restore Oregon, which is sort of the local affiliate of the National Trust and um, calls out uh, buildings in need of uh, preservation, the most at, sort of at risk buildings, as well as uh, honors every year uh, projects which have preserved buildings by um, you know, reuse. And there's some really cool reuse. I posted a thing to my Facebook page last uh, over the weekend of uh, their award winners from um, 20 from late 2019 for uh, reuse, which were everything from industrial buildings to uh, apartment buildings to uh, a courthouse in rural Oregon and a small hotel on the main street of Burns, Oregon. So um, there, for people who are interested in historic preservation, there's a lot out there and I uh, encourage you to look to uh, Restore Oregon as sort of the leading organization in Oregon uh, doing historic preservation work. And with that, I will turn it over to Greg. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Councillor uh, Beatty, Mayor and the rest of the city councilors. Thank you for allowing Milwaukee Historical Society to present Preservation Month. My name is Greg Hemer and I am Vice President and Communications Director for the Society, who is owner and operator of the world's largest museum on Milwaukee history, located at 3737 Southeast Adams Street, currently closed to visitors because of stay-at-home orders. Slide. Speaking of COVID-19, I would simply like to say that the museum is looking forward to opening when the time is right. We have canceled our annual home tour and our June 2nd historic lecture series. Just because the museum is closed does not mean we have not been working. We have created field displays, working on the grounds, and digitizing, organizing, and cataloging our outstanding collection of Milwaukee historical artifacts. If you have a history question, please email us at milwaukeemuseum at gmail.com or take a, lot, a walk using Lots Loop on our website. Slide. We are lucky that most of our funding comes from donations and memberships, but many of our like-minded friends like Baker Cabin and Philip Foster Farms are suffering. Because most of their revenue comes from either weddings or school groups, they have had to lay off employees and struggle to keep their story of history alive. Please take some time this year to visit these places so that they can recover. Slide. Preservation in some circles is a dirty word. It slows economic progress, makes an area stagnant, or even just seen as buildings crumbling away. It may cause lost opportunity, limits new housing, or just makes an area ugly. Preservation may be seen as a roadblock to new ideas the residents of a city want to see or what a council may decide it needs to initiate for tax revenue, increased transit opportunities, or increased population in a struggling area. These buildings and historic places are destroyed not only because of personal land ownership rights, but by purchase of properties by local and regional governments. Now let me be clear. Preservation cannot be for everything. That would be silly. But recognizing a great or unique or only one left preservation as an asset or an investment, just like art, 
is a worthy community goal. Slide. Preservation happens either by political will or action, by the land and building still being useful, or by one or two heroes who love historic things and see the beauty in them. On the screen are a few examples of what has been preserved in Milwaukee. But let me tell you of one local hero, the Gossage family. They bought Hager's Pond, restored the old Gerst Mill, and will work on getting the pond back in shape. They restored and owned the house next door back to its 1900s original facade, and they have purchased other early 20th century homes in Milwaukee and have restored them. And they also bought the Gerber house that so many were hoping to see it not demolished. And in fact, it will not. It is now home to one of their family members. And I would like to remind you that Mark Gossage is owner of McLeod Construction, a builder and a developer. Not all of them are built solely on greed as we, the community, the community constantly claim. Slide. Preservation in its simplest form is maintaining something in its original or existing state. Some forms of preservations are considered bad like Kellogg Lake, but preserving the history of Clackamas people, preserving wildlife habitat, and even preserving the current climate is all action City Council is working towards. Preservation has its place and should be viewed as opportunities instead of roadblocks. Because as the old Cinderella song goes, you don't know what it's got till it's gone. Slide. Now, Mayor Gamba, if you could please read the proclamation. All right. Whereas the preservation of historic places is an effective tool for revitalizing neighborhoods, fostering local pride, and maintaining community character while enhancing livability. And whereas since 1973, the National Trust for Historic Preservation and countless other communities across the United States have marked May as an annual time to reflect on the importance of preserving places that reflect America's history. And whereas modern day Milwaukee situated in the historic homeland of the Clackamas people was established in 1847 and incorporated in 1903, the city boundaries encompass a range of potentially historic buildings, including late pioneer era structures and exceptional mid-century architecture. And whereas residents of Milwaukee and many and the many volunteers of the Milwaukee Historical Society have helped raise awareness of historic resources and buildings in our community, including by launching the first historic homes tour in 2019. And whereas the preservation of historic places has a positive impact on communities by strengthening neighborhoods, encouraging local economic growth, providing a physical link to the past, and being environmentally responsible. Now, therefore, I, Mark Gamba, Mayor of the City of Milwaukee, a municipal corporation in the County of Clackamas in the state of Oregon, do hereby proclaim May 2020 as Historic Preservation Month in Milwaukee to increase public understanding of the importance of preserving our history for future generations.